Hey everyone, I'm Davin, the sales executive here at Kirkham Iron Tech. I have our founder and CEO, Tom Kirkham. And today, uh, I have a question for you, Tom, and it's uh, something that's been asked quite often of me, but it's overall how to avoid um, password attacks, password breaches. What's your advice or, or go-to, maybe top three things that uh, you should do to avoid password attacks? Well, first of all, uh... Don't do stupid stuff like, the sticky you know, notes. <clears throat> well, that that's, uh, uh, I'm actually talking about your password being your pet's name, your dog's name, your cat's name, and then the birth year of your firstborn. Okay. Just quit doing that. Uh, and they need to be long and they need to be complex. Okay. So sometimes passphrases are okay. You know, if you can get them out to be 15, 20 characters, you know, a favorite quote or something mm -hmm. like that. But although if you post that quote in a lot of different places, you know, on social media or whatever, that's not exactly a good idea, which brings us to best practices. Mm -hmm. Right now, best practices is a password manager and turning on multi-factor authentication. Now, I know that you mentioned to me before we started filming here that uh, you've had people tell you, well, it's just convenient for me to use a sticky note mm -hmm. and write it up there. And uh, <clears throat> I understand that, but I just don't think in the modern society that we're in, when you look at all of the sheer number of logins that everyone has, you know, I've got hundreds of thousands and I know most people don't, but, uh, but you're going to have 10, 20, 30, 40, mm -hmm. easy. And, and you're not going to carry those sticky notes with you everywhere. It's not convenient. Mm -hmm. And chances are you're going to reuse passwords. 90% of the population reuses passwords, right? That's exactly right. Even though 60% know they shouldn't. So that gets us back. What is best practice? Best practice is a password manager and then enable MFA or multi-factor authentication wherever you can, which means Facebook, which means Amazon. You could, you'd be shocked at how many different places offer that authentication. But the nature of a password manager, number one, it is secure. Mm -hmm. Even LastPass's security problems they had last year, there's no reason to think anyone's credentials were accessed. They had, they had serious problems, make no mistake, and I'd recommend getting off of LastPass now. Um, and, and get one password or keeper. Mm -hmm. um, but a password manager is going to allow you to create 15, 20 character, 25 characters, randomly generated passwords that's going to be unique for every site. Okay. Furthermore, with the browser plugins, it will auto often automatically fill in the credentials and even the MFA token. So it's already more convenient than sticky notes. But most importantly, you always have it with you because yeah. it synchronizes across all your devices. So if you're out somewhere and you need to get access to your E-Trade account uh, suddenly, you've got it right there on your phone and you can get into it. Or you've got it on your phone and you can use it on your laptop, whatever whatever you want to do with that. Uh, now, I often hear that, well, that's a single port of failure. What, what if the password manager itself, itself gets compromised? Well, the master password is super critical. You know, that definitely can't be used anywhere else. It definitely needs to be long, and you definitely should turn on multi-factor authentication with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, as far as that password manager being hacked, it is extremely unlikely. Those password manager vendors that I just mentioned, one password and keeper, and there are others, mm -hmm. but those are our two favorites, or at least my two favorites. Um, that data is encrypted on the device once when it's created. So even though it's sending it across to your desktop and your laptop and your phone and your tablet and all of this stuff, no one can see it in traffic. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, AES 256 bit or, or the equivalent of that. And uh, it is super, super secure. 
So even the password companies themselves don't even have your password, even a master password. Uh, they've got some tools that you can use to reset your master password if you uh, misplace it or you forget it or whatever. But even they cannot see your credentials of any in any way, shape, form, or fashion. And uh, so the convenience argument is really not sound. Oh, no, no, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't want to use a password manager uh, because it's a hassle. I tried it for a day or two. But I'm telling you that uh, once you get over that hump and they're all quirky and it's not mm -hmm. that they're quirky because they are quirky, it's websites are a little quirky. You know, yeah. some of them will stop automatic fills on the password field and, and things like that. But you could still just copy and paste. Mm -hmm. uh, I, when I sign into my Amazon account, I've got MFA turned on. It's fully automatic. Yes. Email, password, MFA. It knows right when to pause to wait for the MFA screen, and then it fills it in there. Often, it'll automatically put it on the clipboard. So all you got to do is paste. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are more convenient. You just got to get over that little bit of a hump. And I promise you, I promise you that after about two or three weeks or a month of using one, and you've got the browser plugins, you've got it across all your devices. Once you do that, you're going to wonder how you ever <laughs> lived without one. I just don't think anyone in the business world or even in their personal life can truly protect themselves without a password manager. Now, I do. You know, there's some things, there's things coming in the future. Sometimes mm -hmm. I get asked about quantum computing. They've already got a plan for that, and it's going to be announced. I forgot the group working on it, but uh, it, they're going to strengthen the encryption technology ahead of the time when quantum computing actually becomes a real thing. It's not real yet. Mm -hmm. the, the earliest forecast is four to five years. Other experts are saying 10 years. Well, they're going to have the encryption standard ready to go in, in uh, two years, less than two years. So I did, I did want to bring up a point. You mentioned uh, website plugins and a lot of people say, well, oh, I just save my logins and passwords in the browser I'm using, or I, I save it in Google Chrome and it just fills in for me. Uh, what's your, your comment on that? Stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially Chrome. Yes. There are hacking tools that the criminals use that are designed specifically to go in to the Chrome browser and retrieve credentials. So yeah. turn it off. Now, the, there are a couple of exceptions. Number one, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, I, that, their security is top notch. Mm -hmm. It's uh, their, I think it's, what's it called? Uh, Keychain. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> it's very, very secure, but it's also not very user friendly. It's not easily accessed. And so if it doesn't work automatically, it's kind of clunky. They're working on improving that. Uh, but if, from a security standpoint, I'll if if Keychain prompts me to save credentials, I'll say yes to that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it it works really well, and I don't have to use Keeper, right? Yeah. But uh, and then the other exception, as far as saving them in a browser, I'm kind of okay with Firefox. Mm -hmm. But outside of those two browsers, Safari and Firefox, turn it you off. Don't sure. even. Yeah it'll don't even let it prompt you for it because it's not secure yes you know? if you miss a security update on chrome or any other browser and you have those logins stored on that browser um, depending on what time of what type of vulnerability um, that security patch is uh, is fixing um, your credentials may be at risk just because you're saving them on that on that browser and just because it's not up to date and so um, no matter what, we do recommend using a password manager, but um, I did want to walk through just real simple what it's like using a password manager, um, just so the audience, if they've never used one before, I know you described a few things uh, and of how it works, but overall, all you have to do is memorize one master password, and once you have that master password, you upload all your logins and credentials into the password manager, um, it will create those customizable 15, excuse me, 15, 20, 25 character long passwords for you. So you don't even have to memorize it. And then from there, you're good to go. All you do is say you're logging into Facebook, click the, uh, the web page uh, keeper or password manager logo. It'll fill in those credentials for you and you're done. That convenience of, or that partnership between convenience and security 
is extremely important. And with a password manager, you're able to achieve that. Yeah. And, and just to wrap up on the, uh, the convenience thing, mm -hmm. the world society has trade for 40 years has traded convenience and productivity mm -hmm. or traded security for convenience and productivity. And that's got to change. There's yes. no way totally. we're going to be safe as a nation. If we don't stop these bad habits, 95% of breaches are because of human error. Yes. And a significant number of those is because of poor password security hygiene. That's exactly right. Well, uh, if any of you all have questions about uh, password managers or what to use, I know we mentioned a few in the webinar, feel free to reach out and I will be happy to answer those for you or at least um, help steer you in the right direction. Uh, but make sure to tune in again. And if you have any topics uh, that you'd like for us to talk about, make sure to drop them in the comments or shoot us an email or phone call. And we'll make sure uh, to, th to throw that in. Thank you. Stay vigilant. Stay vigilant.